So one of you asked in the comments of the last video to make a Dalton out of some of this Tallahatta that I spalled in the last video. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Um, this is actually kind of wet. Um, it was out in the rain, but they say Tallahatta works really, really well uh, when, it's, when it's wet. It's got water on it, rain on it. So uh, let's put that theory to the test here today and see if we can make a Dalton point. Now, Daltons are uh, different, or they look a little bit different wherever you go. You know, if you're in Missouri, you know, Daltons will have a, a different look than maybe the Daltons you find in Alabama or, or Georgia. Also, they get a little bit bigger seems like the more north you go. By the way, if you heard something, somebody panting in the background, that's my dog. He's, <laughs> he wants to get out there, but it's raining right now. Or at least it, it was, and it's wet. Hey, calm down, buddy. I'm gonna have to put you inside here in a second. But yeah, we're going nap this piece able to somewhat overshoot the back edge there which is nice and we're just trying to bring our center line together our center line together so whatever that takes you can see we're a little bit misshaped from that angle also, Daltons, uh, or when you're making a Dalton, you can afford to lose a little more width, at least in my opinion, than in other points as you're drawing them down. Notice that flake drew straight back and ended up about right there. I think it does work a little bit better with, with water, holding a little water. Um, I've heard that from a lot of friends. Uh, Bobby Davis oftentimes will put some of his in water. I don't think he'd mind me sharing that. But this is a really, really nice Tallahatta. So I'm gonna try to make a, a Dalton point out of this thing. So let's see what we can do. Pete, you need to back up. Go lay. There you go. Good job. Good. Now, I've also heard that, and I don't need a really wide base on this one, so I'll draw that in. I've also heard that Antler does wonders on Tallahatta. I mean, it, it just is the bee's knees. Problem is, I don't have any good antler that size. So instead of using a solid copper head, which will work, but it can, it produces a larger bulb of percussion, I've opted for a lead filled, um, top heavy, copper bobber. So it's not as heavy in the tip. And this produces seemingly a flatter flake. But right now I got a lot of cortex we gotta get around, so we gotta figure that out. By the way, I'm kind of making this for a friend. And uh So I'm hoping to make this really nice, a really nice Dalton. You know, there are a lot of Daltons in, well, Alabama in general, but a lot of them have been made from this Tallahatta stone, same stone. But, uh, I think there was a slight misconception in one of my earlier videos when I was talking about 
authentic points and how if you had an authentic point that uh, was made from material that was foreign or out of a different, from a different state material, and like if I was to find obsidian here in Alabama and it was like a clay point or a boggy branch or something, it's kind of a tell that it's, it's not authentic. But, um, but that's kind of the context. I, I, what I wasn't trying to say was that you can't make points or any kind of point out of any kind of material. As a napper, you can do what you want. <laughs> um, that is perfectly fine. So sorry for the confusion there. It's nice, I'll keep that. Yeah, I do think the water certainly helps, especially probably on thinner pieces too. Uh, thought I'd add that in there. I mean, water seeps through, but I can already tell that uh, it doesn't seem as dense in the middle. It seems more rocky now. Or maybe that's because I've already exposed most of it to the air. Not an expert on this water treatment. But Tallahatta is Tallahatta, and we're gonna make a point nonetheless. Tallahatta is also one of those materials where it also can be a little bit worrisome at times because it can where some pieces can be a little bit flaky. Just a little bit. So you always have that fear of, will I, will I really get a point out of it? But we're gonna try. We're gonna try. Do our very best. Knocking off this bit very, thick edge here by somewhat zigzagging. But making sure we zigzag well below center line. And then I strike roughly about where center line is. I strike right here rather than up here. I strike right there. To where I struck. Not here, but up here. That'll produce some big valleys, big big ridges like that. And right there, if I was to, you know, I'd just sit here. If I was to flip it over and go ahead and hit here, it'd be a little odd. I want to get this right here even more above center line. Should have abraded. <laughs> Who would have guessed? There we go. Yeah, that helped. Now we'll do kind of the same thing there. See our edge? Made a humongous W. It's kind of what I was going for. We want to set up some really nice platforms when you're working this stuff. You don't want to have any guesses as to where it's going. Okay, so we're going to try to thin this piece out. We abraded quite heavily there. We're cutting under some of the cortex here. And really this is just the exposed rock uh, of the original point. Like in this coral, you know, you have the cortex here, which is what this is back here. Then you have like just the outer part of the rock that's already exposed. Uh, that's that's what this is right there. So that, that's not really an issue. But where this cortex is, we got to get it out. And you got to get it out without removing too much of our stone. Okay, I think, I think we did it. 
keep in mind, a Dalton, a Dalton, we can lose quite a bit of our width. Yeah, it should have abraded. And also with Tallahatta, that's something you'll see is you need to abrade. It didn't work because I already messed it up. Let's see if I can pull some magic here. That's Cortex, and we'll hit beside, oh, whoops, beside the Cortex right here. It'll probably hinge out. That didn't even take, okay. Well, let's do the opposite side, then we'll work on the problem side. Looks like there's a little internal seam there. Let's hope that doesn't cause us any issues. All it means is we gotta remove more off this side. And make sure you wear glasses. If you're not a glasses wearer, if you don't wear glasses, invest in some cheap constructor glasses for a dollar or however much they are. These flakes, no matter what material you're working, will oftentimes just fly right into your eye and then, like me, they might get stuck there for a week and trying to figure out how to get it out. Um, question, should I go to the doctor? You know, it's just, just wear glasses. Preferably clear ones, <laughs> unless you're outside and you need some. Yeah, that's where that seam was. We still got decent length. We'll be, we'll be just fine. Yeah, we're a hair over five inches. We'll be just fine. Yeah. We'll make it work. Like I said, that, that's just Cortex stuff right there. You have that on every piece of stone. Um, if it comes with Cortex, you'll always have to, at some point, tackle, tackle Cortex and its issues. But luckily we were able to get past it. Okay, so these, these big ridges we made earlier, they come in handy like you wouldn't believe as you're trying to thin these, these points out. And drive back first. I'm gonna change the direction of that platform. It was headed that way, came out a little bit more, but I brought it in so I can shoot it. They will shoot across. Again, this won't be a humongous point. Not by any means. It'll be nice. All right. Again, always a brave. More than you think you need to. See, yeah, should have abraded more. These medium grid abraders on Tallahatta, mm -hmm. you, you, you gotta get the heavy abrader. Or the coarser grit abrader, that's the more technical way to say that. Abrade, get all the the junk off, which this will remove anyways. Or, there's a flake there that, well, I guess it's just going to cause us some issues. Straighten our point out a little bit. Now we can come from this, we can come from this side. free to have some <clears throat> really large platforms working Tallahatta. You don't want anything small. You, you want large platforms. Okay. Should have abraded. What can I say? Should have abraded. Now on this particular point, I'm actually going to use more 
pressure flaking than anything once we get our shape and center line somewhat figured out. I'm gonna rely on pressure flaking. Let's hope, hope that I can blow this out of the rock here. Yeah, I got, got some of it. Yeah, I, I don't think this will work, but we'll try. Okay, I got some of it. All right, it's just, just inevitable. I know, bear with me. It's not looking like much yet. Trust the process, guys. Sometimes you gotta get rid of little problems that half the time it's the stone's fault, the other half it's mine. That was probably a mix of both. Now I'm gonna catch that funky area right in here with this strike. That's the plan anyway. Yeah, I caught most of it. Catch the rest from the opposite side. Again, I'm not I'm not doing my typical point reduction here. Um, I've left it somewhat thick in some areas on purpose because I know that our point's gonna be fairly minute, not gonna be incredibly wide. I also have a new tool that I'll probably use in this video that will probably shock a lot of you. You'll be very surprised, hopefully. All right, still fairly low here. It's gonna hinge, but that's okay. I'm gonna do it on purpose. Because I need it to. I'm gonna do another hinge right here. It'll be a wide hinge probably. Yep, a wide hinge all the way down right here. And that's so we can catch it. Pretty much overshot that last little bit right there. That was a nice strike. Now, I am not afraid to pull out this indirect stick and make sure these stripes are where they need to be. Even if I bend my indirect stick, which I am, uh, I don't. I, I really don't mind, especially if I need a particular strike to do a certain thing. Yeah, I, don't, I don't mind setting it up. It's just you gotta braid out platform like that. Let's just pray for the best. That worked out really nice. Flake right there. Because we set it up. What can I say? We set it up. Don't judge me, guys. I know half of y'all saw that. I know somebody's gonna comment, you should just short, shorten up your copper insert. Well, 
I will. I'm just gonna do this here. I don't got time to fool with all that. There's my platform. We made it. See how easy that was? <laughs> Alright, this might be bad. Again, this is a really skinny point, so I, I don't mind drawing it in quick. I'm not taking my time. I'm drawing it in. Oh! I'll have to take a quick break. If you know, you know. And we're back. Got a little bit of, uh, armor on so that we can continue what bopper do i want i like this one this base is already flattened out okay and do the rest with pressure flaking it's not too bad uh but up here near the tip where there's this kind of a, a valley here let me try to get that out To a smaller bopper when we work on the on the tip. Already getting to our desired kind of width there on the tip. I'm gonna beef up our bopper size for this hit, and let's just hope it does what I want it to do. Yeah, okay. Just ran right over. Let's do another hit. Now, when you do a double hit on Tallahatta, it's typically not a good thing. So, a braid in multiple directions to make sure that there's nothing going to flake off when you, when you hit. See, I told you just to trust the process, guys. That's what we all worried about. Or maybe I was worried. Or maybe I was worried for y'all. But no, we're good. I will have to even out the base, though. That's something I need to do. And we still got a small little seam. See how I'm holding it, pinching that flake. A small little seam down here at the base. Just kind of messing around with it. Yeah, we got most of it. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, take it. Okay, let's, we need to see our, see our shape here. This side, we're doing okay. This side comes out. Whoa. Looks like a ball, a round ball on that side. Now, look at our thick thickness. I love how thin and nicely flaked this side is. So I'm gonna bevel and hit off this side. Let me switch. Internal seam there, not a big deal. I don't want to you know, complete the tip, but I don't want to just leave it hanging either and make it, you know, everything else thin and the base thick, or the tip thick. But I want to do it proportionally, where I feel like I have enough, it really, it's a support thing. Do I have enough support? to do what I want to do is really the issue I'm talking about there. Okay, here already got good flake scars on this side and it doesn't really matter anyways from pressure flake, so. Pressure flake anyways, guys. Now this is an important hit right here. And I'm not just gonna sit idly by and just randomly hit it. I'm gonna make sure it's a good hit. 
This is a beefy platform. It's honestly a bit low. So if a platform is a bit too low for me, uh, there's a little dip, I abrade down. So I'm striking down, or really in, but I'm gonna abrade down. And then once I have the desired platform, I'm gonna go ahead and braid it from all sides. And hopefully this works out like we want it to. Yeah, so yeah, we caught our hinge. Remember that big hinge right there? Well, we got rid of it, guys. It's already getting pretty translucent, huh? How do you, how do, you do that? Like that? What are we doing here? There we go. Look at that. Yeah, we're getting there, guys. I told you to trust the process. You gotta trust me. Up. That's a little high and that's a little low. So really I'm just taking my center line and making sure that I'm hitting above and below where I need to hit above and below. Just doing my due diligence here. Again, this is a rather skinny point. That's on purpose. Got to thin our base out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Don't want to cause any hinges. We're just wanting to run into the stone a little bit. That's all. Now, as I'm preparing this, I'm not preparing it as a Clovis preform. I'm kind of preparing it as a I don't know, like a redstone preform, or what would be another description? Um, I had something in my mind, but not necessarily a clover preform. I don't want it to come in a little bit. This still needs to still get my center line correct. Ooh. Well, I guess it had to be done. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna need to draw our point in a little bit more. Then I'll start pressure flaking. Because really, it's at this stage I feel like most of you have some trouble. I think. I could be wrong. Who am I to say what y'all have trouble with? Mm, we did it, yep. Yep. Now you can get to this stage of preforming or whatever from a spall, from a flake, a lot of folks who can get it to this stage here but maybe they have a little bit of trouble of fine tuning it that's what I'm gonna try to help accomplish today show you how to finish these points notice I drew that flake back that leaves me a platform to shoot across
right across. All right, I better stop. That's thin enough, right? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be all right. Okay, so let, let's say you get it down to this stage. You can use percussion like I do. You can use indirect percussion. Whatever suits your fancy, you go ahead and do. Now, here's the deal. I am gonna shorten this copper tip up. When you go to Pressure Flake, Tallahatta, uh, you gotta abrade your edge. And I don't mean just a nonchalant, oh, I abraded the edge. No, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta abrade the edge. I mean, seriously. So, where are we gonna go from here? Now, I'm looking at this and I see a probable uh, continuous platform right here that I could shoot across. I think I'm just gonna do it because it's so natural. Like I said, a braid. Now I'm just gonna stop to about right there. Guys, come back and look at what I'm doing. I'm gonna over braid the areas I feel like got left out, and now we're gonna come back. We've got our continuous platform, and we're gonna strike in the most needed areas for a plate to be removed at. So here, notice I brought my copper tip in. The longer it is, the more flexibility there is. That's really good on material that flakes really nice, but on tough stuff, you want it right there next to you. And move over a little bit. See what I'm doing there? I need to move over a little bit more because I create a slight hinge. Move a little bit more. Okay. And we'll have to catch that hinge from the opposite side. That hinge right there. And I got a tool that might help us out. I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Whoops. Okay. So don't need to do anything too crazy. Just, okay, this one I can hit, push in a little bit more. Strike down a little bit. Here I can push in. Down a little bit. Down a little bit. Pushing more straight down there than anything. There's a crusty area. We got it. All right. So it's hard to tell, but we flaked over this side. There, that's a better angle. See the hinges we made? You just gonna have them. And you just gotta hope that you can catch them. Now, we shot flakes this way. Now I'm gonna flip it over, do the same thing. Actually, I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful here because some of these edges are above center line and some are not. And I gotta be very careful with how I choose to approach this. I can't just willy-nilly, okay, we're gonna do it all one direction. Uh, I need to be a little bit precise, so. My abrading is gonna vary depending on the location. Okay, I think we're good. Let's start down here.
That ran over halfway. That's good. Caught a hinge. That's what we want. So we ran from here to into here. Now this is a really flat plane. You don't have much real estate there. So I'm just gonna barely press in. Just really more down than anything. And later on I can come in and press that off, which I probably will, like I said, later on. Flip this over. I got a low platform right there. I needed to address. Let's see. Now this is where it gets a little rough. We got a whole bunch of everything. So that was the most pressing flake. Right there. Now this one's important too. We did it. This one's also important because I'm trying to catch a hinge. Need to lower, or excuse me, raise the platform right there so that I can drive past that little hinge right there. Can you see it? Yeah, we got it. Also, don't mind that I have a very blunt, square tip. Uh, I mean, it just get eight down anyways. I think it was sharp whenever I started this video, so you can actually look back and see how much damage it took. And uh, kind of what we're working with right now. Again, just hitting down and up where I feel like it's needed. And I'll show you what we're what we got left. In a moment. Okay, that's good. We did good there. Are Dolan's bevel? I have to look. I think they are. That's a really bad of me not to remember. I want to say yes. I'm so used to seeing a ton of you know, flint napped pieces that are beveled, some not beveled, and I kind of forget sometimes. Hey, is this, is that right? <laughs> It's the only side we didn't really catch. Got a little high there, don't want to mess up our center line. Which it is slightly messed up, but not bad. I have to lose a little bit of our tip, that's all. Because it dives down a little bit. Well, really, we got a bevel anyways, right? Nah, I'm gonna go ahead and take that, I don't wanna fool with it. There is just a slight curve, and I'm gonna definitely have to lose a little bit of this tip. 
but sometimes it's just part of life. Still be a good point. It'll be better because I decided to do this. guys bear with me I'm looking to see what needs to be done I'm looking to see if that's adequate or if we need to lose a little bit more of our length I think once we, yeah, we had a slight curve, folks. Uh, sorry about the, well, I'm not apologizing. I guess it's just, it's just one of those things. Got too much of a curve. And I think I might flake over this side once more. So we got a rounder edge. Really nice. That was good too. That was just okay. And this is kind of a serious platform. We caught it though. Caught that one too. Had to cover a great distance, so I was a little worried. Yeah, caught that little piece in the middle. All right. We're doing great. Like I said, tidying up last minute center line issues. Is all we're doing here. The problem is with center line issues, this late in the point, sometimes you have thick areas you have to address. This is one of them here. Mm, didn't do what I wanted. But that did. Yeah, that, that worked out great. Okay. All right, I'll clean that edge up. And we're on our way to a really nice dolphin. All right, so most of our center line issues, if not all of them, are gone out of the way. That's what we're left with. Something about like that. And where's my sweet, did I leave my sweet tea inside? I must have. Oh goodness. This tip is really thin. Okay, I need to fool around with this base before I do anything else. I'm trying to remember what they look like. I'll have to go from memory, I guess. Maybe I'll just try to make a, a Tallahassee shape. That should get me what I'm looking for. I made Tallahassee's. And they're pretty... 
similar to Dalton's in really a lot of ways. Now the real question is, am I going to bopper the base, indirect the base, or issue stick the base? That's a great question. Yeah, I don't want to necessarily get it any thinner. At least right now. This isn't a Tallahassee shape. I think I'm I think I'm getting my mind right. With a, with a Dalton? I think so. Hopefully this doesn't come out completely wrong. But I, I doubt that'll happen. Watch me continue napping and just make like a Kirk stand or something. <laughs> That'd be pretty bad. Y'all probably question my validity as a, as a napper. He doesn't even know what a Dalton is. Starting to come into shape, right? Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Do like I do with my Clovis this year, I think. Again, how do I want to do this? Use a bopper, maybe? I'm kind of scared to. Well, I did okay, I guess. Let's see what we did. I guess that's all right. I mean, I'll, I'll take it. Went up to right there. It's a thin, thin little fluke. Thin little joker. 
Let me get my pressure flexor back. Yeah, you know, where's that thing at? Here it is. Is it bad to say? I mean, I don't think I've ever made a dolphin before. And I'm a napper. It's just unheard of. I think this is kind of the style of, of these Tallahatta Daltons. I've, I've, I've seen a few of them. I think this is kind of how some of them look. I mean, we'll see. Should have pulled up some images to look at. That would have been great. Ooh, this is a really thin platform. That's never good with Tallahatta. See how thin that is? Yeah, that's a good angle. We'll try it. Better a braid. A braid, a braid, that thing. And just hope it does something decent and stays together. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this, guys, just being honest. Yeah, it hinged out. That's tough. Hinged out. This is my new tool. Give me a second. The Punch O Matic. It's got a spring. Like a jackhammer. This is probably going to ruin my point here. Yeah, it's, it's just going to, yeah, I ain't, I ain't going to fool with that. Ain't going to do it. I can pressure flake into this thing, though. I got a little bit of room to do something like Something dumb like that. It's our little problem here. Yeah, that one. That one. This won't go across. It'll stop. Hmm. What to do, what to do. Hmm. What if I hinged it again? Yeah, what if I hinge it again?
Yeah, I hinged it again. Will that be any better? I feel like this point's gonna break though. Sharpen it again. This will probably break the point, but it's worth a shot, maybe. Oh, look at there. Hey, hey it worked. The Punch-O-Matic. I'm telling you, this thing, I don't know where I got uh, I know who I got it from. Next video, I'm going to post the dude's um, information on this thing. It's basically a spring and two pieces of metal that have um, been taken apart, I guess. And it's a certain kind of steel. And it just, you put it on, I mean, really it's for notching. I mean, this is some raw coastal and you can just put it right where you want to, start your notch, flip it over, abrade your notch, flip it over. Typically you'd abrade your notch, but then you just keep going. Like I said, I'm just fooling around right now. I'm not really. Yeah, you'd abrade that area there. But anyway, yeah, like I said, I'm fooling around. This is a raw coastal. But you get the point. Man, it worked. That's awesome. I mean, it, it was able to get up to right there. That's what. That's all we needed. This side was already good. Pressure flaking nonetheless. But I mean, when you're talking about getting rid of uh, stacks, man, this side even looks prettier than the other side now. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, I'll have to get his information and give it to you guys. I know. It could be a real help to some of you, probably. It's a help to me. So. I'm not saying y'all need help. <laughs> you know what I mean. We all need help in certain ways. Oh yeah, this is coming out nice. But yeah, Jonathan Johnson, he's the guy I got this material from. A really, really awesome guy. Highly suggest you check out his stone. Um, I got a message in one of my last couple videos. Uh, where do I reach out? How do I reach out? Uh, on Facebook. You go on Facebook, you type his name in. And if there's a whole bunch of people with his name, then go to the Flint Napping groups. There's a group called Flint Napping, another one called Rock Connections or something like that. Let me turn my hat around here. You can find them there. But just feel free to send them a message. came out really nice. And we still gotta work on our blade portion. Notice how we got this edge tidied up. We'll do the same thing on this side. Hopefully. That's the plan.
buddy Joshua is going to get this one. He watched my last video. And big shout out to him. Seems like a real good guy. I think I've met him. Maybe I have. I don't know. If he came to the Ozark show last year, I might have met him. But I'm, I'm sure he's watching. Appreciate you, buddy. base kind of tidied up okay all right so now let's worry about the blade itself do I want to have it sharpened does it need to be beveled I'm gonna say yeah just because why not I don't know which side to do it on but I'm just gonna pick a side I'm only gonna bevel it once, or uh, excuse me, yeah, bevel. Yeah, that's the right word, yeah. I don't wanna have to bevel it 200 times to get the point I'm looking for. I just wanna do it once, if I can get away with it. Can you see what I'm doing there? One side, let's do the other. See how far I'm coming in too? How far I'm eating into the point? That's just a personal thing. Like I said, I only want to do this once. I'm not trying to do it a hundred times. So I'm gonna take a big bite out of it. And just kind of go straight down. So we got our kind of pre-shape Dalton pretty much squared away. Now let's see if we can open up these serrations a little bit. Again, I, I don't know if Dalton's had serrations. I'm assuming they did. I've just seen flint napped examples, so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna go with what I know and hope for the best.
I've seen some serrated Daltons by Ed Mosher and some others. They do a fantastic job. So I'm just going to assume that some were, were serrated like this. So don't bash me too bad in the comments if I'm wrong. I'm gonna do a couple passes on these serrations. Making sure I got everything the way I want it to be. I'm not necessarily going for perfection, I'm just kind of tidying these areas up more than anything. this thing up again. side. Serration is sticking out a little bit too much there, so I'm going to trim it back just a hair. up a little bit like that and just fix your mistake. even need to strike down once more. All right, now we're going to come back on the other side. Tidy it up a little bit. Like I said, this will technically be my first Dalton point ever. 
I've made a Tallahassee before, but not a Dalton. And I'm modeling it after Tallahatta Daltons that I've seen, authentic ones, so. If it's not the Dalton that you're familiar with or it looks a little different, I apologize. Coming in between the serrations. I've heard some people call them serrations. Ser, sir, ser, sir, sir. I guess it doesn't matter. Depends on where you're from. It's like crappy or crappie. I've always said crappy. His dad would call him crappy. Grandpa would call him crappy. Everybody I knew called him crappy. When you look on Google, Dead Gum Google will say it's crappy. You know how it'll give you a kind of a this is how it this is how you say it, the pronunciation of the word. Well Google says crappy. Take offense to that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Call it whatever you want. Just don't call it crappie around me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm drawing this tip. Notice towards the tip, um, not just pressing in as much, I'm angling it or I'm pressing almost down. Like instead of pressing in, I'm changing it where it. I'm pressing in that direction. I want the tip to be pretty much perpendicular with everything else I got going on. And like I said, I'm, I'm not going to spend all day fooling around with these serrations. But I may spend another five, ten minutes on them. This was like a <clears throat> 15 inch point or something. I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration. I'm not going to spend all day fooling around with these Tallahatta serrations. It'll be what it'll be. I need my sweet tea. And I don't have it. Maybe that's why I'm saying these things. This comes out kind of far, so I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. And we're pretty much done, guys. I mean, pretty much. Solid. Like I said, serrations are just going to be what it'll be. I'm not going to fool around with them too much. As long as they look somewhat proportional. And they're symmetrical. I 
think they look good though. I mean, I know I'm biased. I know I need to abrade the base. I think once I do that, I'm gonna be done. That's what I was looking for. Slight bit of symmetry error there on the base, but I fixed it. Now I know a lot of y'all like the short term or short videos. The thing is, I like napping too. So I'm gonna post a mix of both. Whether you like it or not. All right, so that's just, that's just gonna be what it's gonna be. And I'll tell you what, let me do a little trick here. And slightly pronounce some of these serrations, make them look a little bit cleaner by using a file. Just slightly cleaner. Nothing crazy here. But it can help with a little bit of disproportion. sides I'm going to use flatter and braider. Now that I'm looking, my symmetry is off a little bit. And I see kind of the issue. And I need to fix it. Don't cry. But there's sometimes things just need to be addressed. And that's one of them right here. It's 
symmetry was off. And I'm not going to send my buddy an unsymmetrical point. It just ain't happening. Now that's symmetrical right there. That is indeed symmetrical. And that's what I'm looking for. So at least you're able to see what I typically do when I do have a symmetrical issue with serrations, and I've already done the serrations, I typically will abrade on a particular side. And then, yeah, this will look better anyways. Yeah, this will look a lot better. Give me like a solid five more minutes. Yeah, this, this will look better. See, I fixed our symmetry, so we're doing a lot better. And now I just got to clean up these serrations. And we'll be good. Makes the tip more skinny too. I like, like skinny tips uh, on these points looks more uh, fragile. I mentioned that in previous videos. Sometimes a little little edge or a little notch or, or corner, if it looks fragile, I don't know, it just adds to eye appeal, in my opinion. Humble opinion. We're about there. As y'all can probably tell, because we're closing down on our time in this video.
Sorry guys, I'm a bit focused here. All right, well, well that'll, that'll just have to do. And I think that'll be okay. this point to be good. Much, much, much better. I'd rather have a little bit shorter point and it'd be, be really nice and close to perfect than just something kind of bleh, asymmetrical and just kind of not so appealing. Yeah, we got a, got a really nice point here. And just like that, we're, we're symmetrical. It took a while. Like I said, I'd rather be symmetrical than not. That'll have to do, guys. I think that's pretty nice. Okay. All right. Well, there's our Dalton. It's beveled. And I think it looks good. Let me bring it closer to, uh, to frame. So we got our nice beveling on it. Don't know how well you can see it. Probably not super well. But that's a really nice Dalton.
Nice little bevel. Pretty good serrations. And if this thing won't fall, it's uh, translucent too. Pretty cool. Again, this material is from Jonathan Johnson. Um, he's got a decent amount of it. There's my face. But anyways, pretty nice Dalton. We'll end it there. Appreciate y'all watching as always. And uh, catch y'all in the next video.